right, welcome everybody. I'll go ahead and call this regular meeting of the Maple Run Unified Board of Directors to order at 6.08. Tonight is 21 March 2018. We're meeting in the BFA library. We have eight directors present representing seven directors present representing six votes. Start with uh, modification to the agenda. I'm told that we need to have a student report, so we'll put that at uh, item 5B. Any other changes to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, I'd look for a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Welcome, Al. Thank you. Abstentions? Approved 6 0. Then I would ask everyone now to please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so that brings us to item four, which is visitors. Are there any visitors here tonight that would like to give testimony to the board? Seeing none, we'll move on. That brings us to item five, which is our host site presentation. I'll turn it over to Principal Mosca. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Farr. Um, we have a couple of student presentations and um, some um, features on student learning in world languages and in business. So um, I'm going to begin with the student presentations. We've got a group of uh, young people here. Um, as you, I'm sure, know, we've had some uh, tremendous success in our athletic, our athletic programs. We have um, representatives from our championship girls snowboarding and our championship girls hockey team uh, with their coaches. and. Um, it's just a tremendous... I can learn to understand you much better if I can get... <laughs> Is she talking to me? Yes, or that? Beautiful. I'm so glad it wasn't me. <laughs> I'll try to make my remarks more succinct so that she can understand. Um, so, uh, we, we love winning titles. Let's not... Uh, Let's make no mistake about that. But most importantly, it is the experience that the students have, the values that uh, our athletic program uh, teaches them and what they bring to our school community. And it's also about our student body. Anybody who's attended uh, BFA athletic events knows that it's not just about the athletes, it's about the entire school community, uh, the way our kids uh, respond in those settings. They make a wonderful impression, uh, particularly down at, um, in Burlington at UVM during the uh, championship game. It's not unusual to see our kids cleaning up after the event and we get a lot of positive comments from some of the security folks and the people down there because of the uh, way our kids uh, conduct themselves in a spirited way but also uh, never forgetting the important values of sportsmanship. So um, I'm just going to ask Dan if he could say a couple of words and then maybe introduce the coaches sure. and then Chairman Fire will be able to present some certificates. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, for having all of us come here. Uh, it's with great pleasure uh, that I introduce our two hockey coaches. First, our snowboarding, girls snowboarding coach, Mr. Brett Walker, and our girls, one of our girls um, hockey coaches that's here with us tonight, Mr. Luke Coffey. I'll have him introduce the, the players that are here, because that's who you're really here to listen to. Uh, and uh, so here we go, with great pleasure. Um, thank you for, for all the support uh, for not just this year, but every year uh, that we get for the, for the hockey program. So I uh, can't say that's enough. We, it's not every community that we get this, that gets the support like we do. So it's St. Albans is home and special for a lot of reasons, and that's one of them. Uh, the two captains that are here tonight, uh, Elizabeth Dukas, a junior from Georgia, and Molly Marshall, a senior from Fairfield, our only senior. So, besides Marissa Needleman, who is a manager. So, congratulations, ladies. Uh, Mr. Farr, 
present a little something on behalf of the board. Said, my name is Brett Walker. I uh, get the pleasure and the privilege to coach the boys and girls snowboard team. Um, yeah, we got a championship. It was really exciting. Um, we had a great year, and I appreciate uh, all the support I get around the school. Uh, you know, we miss the snowboarders missed some school because of what the, the nature of their contests. And um, not to get into too much of my end of the year speech with the kids, but. Um, they get a, uh, an alternative life experience, um, and I, I think that's really valuable. They, something different than every other kid necessarily gets. So uh, I, I have three of my four snowboarders here tonight, the girls. Um, Autumn Gratton was not able to make it, but I'll bring up Sierra Law. She was our captain this year. Um, and then we have Taylor Pelkey, and Marie Wolf is joining us all the way from Cologne, Germany. Slide in here, please. Yes, uh, and, and Taylor Pelkey, she did, did compete for us. She literally fell and uh, tore her shoulder up on her last snowboarding run of the season. Um, but they were all troopers this year and uh, worked really hard. So I'm proud of them all. Thank you, Coach Rockham. So first is Sierra. Thank you. you go. Thank you. Taylor? Yeah. Uh, no, Taylor is here. Yeah. Taylor is here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> and Marie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I also wanted to say it's not only our job. Like, Rob, you did a really good job teaching us and being our coach. And I just wanted to say thank you to him, too. As a whole Thank you very much. And um, also, I do have one other student presentation. I just got this under the wire. Um, our yearbook staff has done a tremendous job. Um, when we, uh, Ms., uh, Ms. Howard and um, Ms. Parent uh, lead the group. Uh, in many <coughs> schools, the yearbook is done through a class. In our school, it's voluntary, so the kids have to put in an awful lot of time, as do the uh, faculty advisors. My understanding from both uh, Ms. Howard and Ms. Parent is that this yearbook will once again live up to the very high standards that we've become accustomed. And I do have certificates for those students, but one in particular who is here tonight uh, is Cameron, and uh, you all know her. And um, we're very pleased that um, she gets uh, a certificate for the outstanding work she did uh, during the special, doing special projects for the yearbook. And so I'm going to present her this because she's right next to me. And um, <laughs> the other part of it, too, that I want to mention is Cameron has been um, a member of the school board when it was the BFA school board, when Nilda was the chair, and now with Jim uh, at, at MRUSD. Cameron has also continued that service. Uh, she gives very detailed reports. I don't think she's ever missed a meeting. And she's very committed to what she does and um, probably like the nicest kid you're ever going to meet. So uh, it is with great pride and privilege that I present this for her yearbook. But I also want to mention the outstanding work she's done as a member of our school board. So Cameron Montag, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to turn this over to Heather Fitzgibbon, so we'll introduce the academic program for the evening. Hi, thank you. Um, I thought about what I would like to highlight for you today. There's so many great things going on here, it was tough to choose. But then I thought, why not just show some of the great, wonderful, everyday things that are going on in our classrooms, the instruction, 
the lessons, and in this case, with world language and drama, the collaboration. And I think that what you're going to see next is a beautiful example of what can happen and how rich the educational experience can be for students when teachers come together. And so I want to introduce to you, we have department chair Lydia Batten here, and then she's going to talk briefly about the Latin um, program afterwards, and Cameron's going to be part of that. But right now I'd like to turn it over to our drama instructor, Susan Palmer, and Ms. Olga Saldariaga, our Spanish, one of our Spanish instructors. And they're going to share a little bit about the collaboration that they did. I'm going to let them set it up. And then we have a video clip here that we will show for you. So do you want to just introduce a little bit about what it was that you did and how you came together? <coughs> that is pretty much said in the video. I don't know if you Should we show the video first? Okay. Yes. Let's yes. go ahead and show the video first. And then they can field any questions that you would have afterwards. collaboration is getting 75 Spanish students to perform a play? Is, is that what's going on? or No, we were just using theater and theater activities to um, deepen their understanding of the language and explore the language in a different way. So using their bodies and voices to, to kind of gain more confidence speaking out as well in the language, but also learn the vocabulary in a really different way. So what does that look like, acting out? Scenarios. I, I'm not clear on what you actually did on the stage. Do you want to try? Yeah, I can. We can. We, we can try. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to act it. as a student, and or you can act as a student, and we say a word. So I had the vocabulary <laughs> words in Spanish, and Susan was in charge of acting out those words. And as the my students were listening to the word, they would look at Susan, and she will act. The, the, the word. For instance, how would you guys act being shy and timid? What will be your body gesture? 
Yeah. How would you, how would your body be to be daring? Daring, <laughs> right? Or uh, impatient, how would, you, how would you show with your body when you are impatient? Paciente, so I will say paciente, and she will say paciente, and paciente, I, and or impaciente. <laughs> and the idea comes from the, the way that we actually learn language when we learn language as babies. There's a whole thing called total physical response that has to do with how we learn language and a study of how we learn language. And the idea is that we, when we learn language as small children, we learn it through our bodies. We don't just learn it through looking at words on paper and on boards. We actually learn it through action and activity. And so they're more likely to retain the information if they're encountering it in a more physical way. And so this is something that we were really putting into practice with these students. And also just exposing them and challenging them. I mean, these transferable skills pieces, like huge, standing there on stage and taking that kind of risk and having to work in pairs and partners and really getting out of their comfort zones. Um, so there was a lot of like learning that was happening beyond just the piece around gaining the language skills. It was like a lot of stuff meshing. And then also kids that might not think I'm an actor are now suddenly on stage under lights, like having to have this new experience and maybe realizing like, oh, this isn't actually so crazy. It, uh, it's not actually as scary as I thought. Maybe I'll try more of this. So it's just another like possibility for them to find a way into a world that might have felt not available. And on the other hand, in terms of um, the communication, which is one of the most important standards when you think about that you learn a language, uh, one of my SMART goals for this year is to help students to be comfortable when they're speaking. I don't know if you have been experienced to learn another language, but when you learn another language, speaking is the most difficult part. And it's, uh, people get intimidated, <coughs> and they don't like to talk in front of someone. They, uh, they're not, they don't feel comfortable because they're going to make mistakes. So it is kind of this opportunity for the students to just be able to communicate and to feel comfortable that they can communicate in different ways. So this was one, one of those ways, uh, to act out and to feel that they can also use their body as well as their voices and their tone and their articulation, pronunciation, to communicate something. Um, for instance, the next day uh, we worked together again because that was kind of the laboratory in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, scenario, but then we came and then in the classroom we continued the collaboration together. So would you like to talk what we did? Well we did kind of an interviewing thing. So we yep. set up a piece where they had, they're working with this vocabulary that's descriptive like daring, artistic, um, like different patient, impatient. They had to interview someone and ask them as if they were on a talk show in Spanish. Um, uh, or did they, they introduce the person, this is so and so, and they and would they ask, are you questions to daring, them. and the person would say yes or no. And they got the opportunity of trying out being a character if they wanted to, so they didn't have to be revealing information about themselves if that felt strange. They could also just be saying stuff about an imagined character. Um, so that was another thing we did. And initially kids were like really hesitant to do it, and then we had, you know, like a real, we filmed one of them, and then we showed other classes the filmed version, and that really gave them a, a model. And then we had one class where everybody just wanted to do it. We kind of ran out of time because they were all getting up, and it started to become really fun, and it was great. I'm very enthusiastic and not intimidated at all to be in front of the class talking. So that talk show, for instance, was the the final assessment for this activity. That was my, my summative assessment. When they were speaking, they were asking questions and answers, answering questions. That was, I am able to ask and answer questions in Spanish when I'm asking about someone else's personality. And I will describe that person. So that was the final assessment. And uh, students were able to do this in two ways. Whoever was intimidated, they were able to make a recording so then they could do this recording with their partner or come in front of the class and give the talk show so we were clapping and saying yes, yes, yes. So we were very enthusiastic just supporting the students. So that's how this experience ended up. I just want to share also what, what my students said about this experience. I said to my students, what do you think about this? Uh, and they said, I liked it. It was different. 
it was good. It, it was good to be out of the classroom. It was it was hands on and it was not worksheets. Yeah. Worksheets. So I think it was totally worth it. And this kind of work is happening in other. These collaborations are happening with other teachers too. Tomorrow morning, I'm coming in and working with Mary Ellen Torvell on a unit. Um, and we're looking at analyzing characters from a text, but we're doing it through different theater activities. So um, there's a lot of these different collaborations happening. And I just want to finish with highlighting another collaboration that is invisible here, but I just want to give a big applause to Alan Steele and Stephen Davis, because those are the ones who made the video. And they were very excited to collaborate with us to make this happen. So thank you, Alan and Stephen, if you're not here. <laughs> I thought that video was a great idea, too, because it, it looked great, and it would be, a, if we have more of those, it's a great way to sell BFA to people who are trying to decide where they want to go. We're working on one right now for the whole um, fine arts and performing arts department that we're going to do, like, a year-long project where they're going to come in and they're going to be filming all different events to make, like, a video that, that highlights all the great things going on. And I just finished another collaboration with Alan and Steven about a, an experience that we finished yesterday, but we were not ready for presenting today. We celebrated a quinceañeras party in the classroom. I don't know if you know what is a quinceañeras party. It's a big celebration that happens in the Spanish-speaking world where the uh, uh, girl uh, turns 15 years old, and it's a huge celebration, as huge as a wedding. So we were doing that in the classroom, having the students celebrate something in a real situation that m m thousands of girls were living the same thing, they were living in the classroom, they were experiencing in the classroom. Uh, thousands of families were having the same excitement we were having la yesterday when we were doing that celebration in the classroom. And there is a video about that, so I can share that video with you also. And again, it's another collaboration between the tech department and uh, my classes. And Susan, do you have an advertisement for an upcoming event? Yes, I didn't want to be like try to sneak that in there, but tomorrow <laughs> night <laughs> um, we are presenting our one-act play. It's called This Girl Laughs, This Girl Cries, and This Girl Does Nothing. And we actually, it's at 7 p.m. in the pack, and we actually just performed it today to all the third and fourth graders from city school, town school, and Fairfield, and I went in advance of the performance and did workshops for 10 different teachers preparing students to come see it, and it was so amazing. The entire place was full. Shannon came and saw um, part of it today, and the energy in the room, they it's were fantastic. Just, so they it, loved it. Whoever can come see it, it's very family appropriate, but it's also, even though it's a children's play, it's a really beautiful piece, and I'm really proud of what the students have done, and we're taking it to the drama festival on Saturday to compete, so. And uh, so finally, before you are going to listen about Latin, I would like to introduce another student of mine, Elizabeth. She's a Spanish three student, and she's going to talk about an experience that we're doing in the classroom that has nothing to do with making a video, but a different application with reality. So I'm Elizabeth Dukas, also from hockey, but in Spanish three too. <laughs> <laughs> So in Spanish 3, we have recently been learning about volunteer work in the community. And so we mostly learn about the vocabulary of recycling and picking up stuff off the streets and just understanding the vocabulary of what it means to be a part of the community and helping out. So Senora had this idea that to wrap up the unit, we should volunteer in our own community to apply our knowledge. So this girl from Voices Against Violence reached out and to Senora, and she came into our classroom and she brought us a bunch of documents like this one and it just kind of shows like some of their um, some of their like posters and stuff and information that they share with the community and how this relates to Spanish is she wants to translate this so it's available for immigrant workers so they feel like they can reach out to fight against domestic violence and sexual violence. So she gave this to us and as our community service we are going to translate it to Spanish so it's available to more people. Awesome. Very nice. 
BFA, that is Latin, and I have been fortunate enough to have Cameron uh, as a student in my class. This is her fourth year. And so I put together a little slideshow. It's not a cool video, but it is a cool slideshow to talk about a couple of things that are a little beyond what we do in the curriculum at BFA. Um, so here we go. Uh, the first thing, which just happened last week on Friday instead of Wednesday because of the snow day, you could advance to the next one, uh, was the National Latin Exam. And it's given annually around the country, actually the world, and about 145,000 students, yeah, that many people are taking Latin still around the world, uh, take the exam. And <coughs> so it's a 40 minute, 40 multiple choice uh, exam geared to the different levels of study. And so I'm gonna let Cameron talk about yeah. her experience so taking the exam. I took it for a second time this past week. Um, unfortunately, due to the trip to Italy last year, we were unable to take it. Um, but Italy was also a good experience. <laughs> That's so, okay, right? I <laughs> can't really complain. So um, <laughs> what we did was we spent, like she said, it's a 40 minute, 40 multiple choice question. And we spent about a month preparing in advance, looking through old exams. And I think that really, that helped me a lot, but it is still really challenging. Um, so it was good. We're waiting on our stores, but. Yeah, the approach that I give the students when we enter this exam is to take the Latin they know uh, and use their critical thinking and problem solving skills to come up with the best choice for their answers. Because they don't understand that they really do know quite a bit about Latin at no matter what level, but these exams are very challenging and so there are always things that they haven't yet learned. So we always go in with a very positive, hopefully, attitude that we use what we know and use that to come up with our best answers. And so um, I'm just happy that they stepped up to put this uh, on their plate as something else to do beyond the classroom. So that was last week. And now we're in the midst of preparing for Latin Day. And I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's now in its 42nd year. And that is celebrated every year at UVM. It's usually the first Friday of the month, and this will be no different. Uh, it's put together by a group called Vermont Classical Languages Association, kind of a, a spur of the Vermont Foreign Language Association. And so the goal of Latin Day is to bring students from high schools around the state together to celebrate, literally, all things having to do with not just Latin and the Romans, but the Greek uh, world as well, and just classical anything. So I'm going to let Cameron talk. We have some pictures Yeah, here. so this year's skit is a lot of fun. Um, I think we finally are finishing it up. Actually, today we put the, kind of the finishing touches on it. <laughs> so this year's skit is called Mostel Mostelaria. Yeah. Um, and what it is, in a super brief, I guess, synopsis, is a dad goes out of town, and his son is left alone with the house. He throws a house party. And when he comes home, the father comes home, he realizes that there's something's going on. And one of the slaves tries to convince him that it's haunted. So he believes that it's a haunted house. So we have a lot of fun with that. We're um, going to paint some backdrops. And we're going to become ghosts, which I think will be a lot of fun. Um, but it's based on an actual Latin story. So we've had to take and kind of translate the Latin and make it a brief three minute skit. Yeah, so they're learning about uh, Roman theater, uh, Greek theater, looking at some vocabulary and figuring out <coughs> ways to incorporate that and modernize it, make it fun. These are some pictures from last year. Um, some of the students who participated and actually received uh, Victoria got a laurel crown for her recitation. Uh, we have a student this year who's also getting ready to do a recitation of Virgil. Um, and so here's a, another group of students from last year. The skit that they performed last year received a blue ribbon, so we're very hopeful that this year <laughs> we will also get a blue ribbon for the skit. Um, and then this year I can announce already that our junior in Latin three, Avery Poston, has uh, submitted a design for a t-shirt contest. You probably noticed the students in the other pictures were all wearing a similar t-shirt because every year you can buy one. You know, it's like your souvenir from the rock concert, but it's Latin Day. And uh, it has all the schools listed on the back. 
And so she um, will win $100 for her prize. I'm sorry, this is the only way that the scan will show up um, in the PDF, but if you go to the next link on that page, Heather, uh, this shows a mock-up of what the t-shirt will look like uh, if you blow it up. So this is her uh, design of her own. She submitted it. It competed against other student designs. It was chosen by the schools. And so everyone who buys a t-shirt this year will have her design. She'll get $100 and the accolade uh, and fame for her design. So this is what Cameron was just talking about. Uh, the Latin fours take the lead. They do most of the planning and execution and writing of the skit. I kind of am in the background helping. Um, and so they're very excited. If you've ever seen a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, that Broadway musical and then later the movie, that is also based uh, a loose interpretation on this Mastellaria uh, play written by Plautus, a Roman playwright. So those are the two things that are really exciting at this time of year that are going on beyond the Latin class, and so it kind of makes it um, exciting to be in Latin class in this dead of winter time. Right? Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Um, Cameron? Yeah, we just started reading the Aeneid, which oh, yeah. this is our first year here, yeah. um, allowing Latin force to do it, and um, we're working with the threes, and what we're doing is we're looking at the Latin, and we have to, we're learning right now how to go through and scan everything and figure out if it's long or short. Um, probably sounds meter, foreign, right? but yeah. um, it's like Shakespeare almost, like trying to figure out what the meter is, like you said, um, and then going through and literally translating it, interpreting it. Um, so that's something new and different yeah. that I really enjoy. Um, it's a way to not just be out of a textbook or... It's experiencing the authentic literature um, in its pure form. And Virgil, of course, writing the Aeneid is the prime, you know, primary document that has survived in antiquity, which kind of explains the whole Roman, um, you know, way of how they believed they came to be as a people. And so if they've read the Odyssey, they've read the Iliad in English class, the Aeneid is kind of that Roman version of those two stories, and they'll actually read it in Latin, so that will be even better. <laughs> Things get lost in translation. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions in particular, but that is our showcase for uh, the languages here tonight. The one thing I do want to mention, we didn't have any French here tonight, but they are planning a trip next year to France. So the, the program is there, it's thriving. We only had so much time. So thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. thank you. share a little bit about the exciting things that are going on there. We have two students. We have Gara Boudreau and Andrew Billings, along with the department chair, Ms. Mary Brulette and Kristen Peralt, two of our teachers. They're going to talk about work that they're doing with the community and what uh, their experience has been. Thank you for being here. Billings. I'm a senior obviously here at BFA. Uh, I plan to be majoring in accounting next year. Uh, Garrett and I have taken so many business classes here we're just gonna give you kind of a synopsis of our journey. So Yeah hello my name is Garrett Boudreaux. I am a senior here at BFA and first I would like to thank you for the opportunity for us to present here tonight. Um, right here this is a flyer I made and as a sponsorship proposal in a independent study called athletic marketing I took which was based off sports marketing which is a class I took as a junior but I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to intensify my studies of the marketing world so I took athletic marketing so basically what happened with this project was I had to come up with an event of sorts so I came up with the ultimate frisbee uh, tournament and then I had to come up with potential sponsors, which I came up one with one was Dick's Sporting Goods because it's a sporting goods store, so I figured it would correlate perfectly with my event. And then I had to organize like the times, the place, all of that that goes into it. And I am going to Endicott College next year as a sport management major. 
So, and I truly believe that by taking sports marketing and the athletic marketing, marketing independent study, that it has helped me prepare me for college and all of my future business endeavors. Uh, so I have a fun fact, I've taken all but three business classes here at BFA. So the first class I ever took was uh, computers and applications. What that class does is it gives us, it teaches, how to, how, teaches us how to use uh, software like the Microsoft Office, so Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, uh, etc. And my mom is actually a government accountant and she's worked at many accounting firms in her life. And when I came home freshman year, she said that that was a great class to be taking, although it is required. She said it was a great class to be taking because of all the class, all the places she's worked, she's never used anything besides Microsoft Office, so we're normally taught Google. Um, at school and she just believes that's a useless method because of all the firms she's worked at is Microsoft Office. Uh, the second class, business class I ever took here at BFA was business entrepreneurship. Um, that class, I'm not joking, literally changed my life. I, I feel I can't live a normal life. I don't wanna sit behind a desk. And so business entrepreneurship, by showing me projects like how to run small businesses from a lemonade stand to a big business, like I don't know, bowling alley or something like that, through small business hands-on venture projects, it showed me that I don't need to work for other people and follow their dreams, I can work and create my own dreams. So, anything else? Yeah, and a, another class I took, actually this semester, is called leadership training. And what that is, is you get to become a better leader and work better as a group. And I think it's one of the best classes at BFA, because one, you can get Dale Carnegie certification, which looks really good on job applications or a college application. And basically, you get to learn about how to manage stress, how to be like a, just self development, which I think is really crucial personally, especially as a high schooler. You got a lot of things thrown at you. So, basically, being able to manage all of that is really important. Um, Garrett talked about his marketing independent study earlier. So, like I mentioned, I am going to be majoring in accounting. So, junior year, I took accounting one which is actually great. It's the first year we brought this uh, online program called Alpha. So it's all accounting online, which anyone will tell you, most accounting firms are they're all doing online work. So Ms. McCarter brought that online program on, a software, and uh, taught us how to use online. And I loved it so much, I decided I want to major in accounting. So this year, senior year, uh, the business department was so nice, they gave me an option to do independent uh, accounting study two, where I got to continue my accounting knowledge, so. Yeah, another uh, business, course that I've taken was last semester, it's called business management. And I think that's a really fun class. I really enjoyed it. I get to learn about all the different aspects like staffing, leading, organizing, planning, as well as developing soft skills, which is really important in the business world, just being able to understand your employees. So basically I learned how to be a better effect or be an effective manager, as well as say if I want to be a CEO of a big business, a multi-billion dollar company, or if I want to be just the manager of a local business in town. I think I've learned the skills to be successful in whatever option I pursue. Um, I would agree. Uh, with a class I have not taken that I regret not taking is personal finance. And I've had many conversations with other teachers, math teachers in the school. I believe that class should be required to be taken here at BFA. Um, it teaches students how to do things like pay off mortgages, pay taxes, and other real life skills that we don't learn from a basic algebra class, I feel. So I, I feel personal finance should be required. And then besides just the classes here, the um, business department brings in a lot of things like it is Financial Literacy Day. It's a day where People's United Bank, you know, the Podcat Realty Group comes in, students get a fake job that they're living for a month, and they have to figure out how they're gonna pay the bills for like rent, utilities, and other things. So it's, it's teaching us real life skills, not just classroom things like how to solve for X. Yeah, and uh, another class I took as well, like I've taken a lot, as you can probably tell, was Career Explorations, which is a required class at BFA. I took that as a sophomore. And that, you learn all the different career possibilities out there, because there are many. And it basically, what I took away from it was that you have to learn about salaries, basically, because that's important, obviously. But you don't necessarily want to do it just for the money. You want to be love what you're doing. Uh, I have one final thing for you. Uh, also here at BFA, we have the option to do job shadowing. So I mentioned earlier I'm going to college for accounting. Well, I'm also going to minor in criminal justice because I want to do forensic accounting. So with the help of the business department and uh, Ms. Chester, she just does, she leads job shadowing. Uh, she got me a job interview for two hours at the FBI offices in Colchester. So I got to sit down with Sarah Gruen. I still have her card in my wallet. 
Um, and, and, you know, um, and got to talk and interview with this sophomore year with a, FBI, with a real life FBI agent to see what the job was like. And so that was just a surreal experience. I couldn't believe I was given that opportunity because of the business department. Yeah, I just say, just in uh, conclusion, the business department has really helped me prepare me for college and beyond. And I did not know what I wanted to do before I took sports marketing, and now it's what I want to do as a career, so I owe it all to them. I think the staff of Ms. Bruett, Mrs. Peralt, and Mrs. McCarter are really excellent, and really, I think everybody should take at least one business class, like as a, uh, not necessarily the required ones, but maybe a business management. <laughs> yeah, just, just to get a feel, or even, like I start the day of business entrepreneurship every day. It's a great day to start really my day. Because yeah. if I get to do projects, and get to do what I want to do. So that's all I have to say, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Questions? Any questions from the board? Questions? I just want to say that um, both of you are incredible presenters. Your passion really comes through. Um, I would just ask, um, what your future goals are? I, I know you, you said you're going to Endicott, and, and you said you're going to. What about five, five plus ten years down the road? Where do you see yourself? Um, well, as of, I think anyone will tell you, uh, they want to be a millionaire, right? Uh, <laughs> but how I want to do that? So I want to go to school for accounting, get a general business knowledge, and then one day, maybe five years from now, I want to start my own application business. You know, putting apps on the app store, uh, service type apps like helping people getting hired and such like that. Because I feel that service apps are the best way to make money, especially in the technology age that we have today. Mm -hmm. And if I provide a subscription service with that, I'm making money when I'm sleeping. So I don't know, just trying to make <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to work for other people. So that's my goal is I want to have my own business. I don't want to work for other people. Yeah, now my goal is I love sports and I love marketing, so I think I want to work with both. So realistically, I want to be a marketing executive possibly. I mean, no, that's going to take a little more time, but doing any kind of marketing work for maybe Nike, Under Armour, or anything like that. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Side note, we'd like to thank oh. Mr. and Mrs. Billings and Mr. and Mrs. Bujo for joining us tonight and giving us Andrew and yes. <laughs> um, so we're now handing out these brochures. These were designed by other business students, yeah, not us. It gives you a summary of all the classes we have and contact information for them. And Garrett's hanging out. We're also handing out business department pens. So. I'll give it to everyone. Yeah. We have plenty. Um, the best friend. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll try. I'll try. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Shannon. Appreciate um, it. Andrew made a good point about personal finance. Didn't the state have a class requirement a few years ago about? Thank you. I don't. Maybe that was the grade level, but we have to teach some personal finance without you're required. To there's no proficiencies about, there's some economics um, in the social studies proficiencies. So we have it embedded into our senior civics class and a little bit into the careers. So it's a little more broader than just personal finance. It's more broad, they call it economics. And then there are some smaller, what we call performance indicators that touch on some personal finance, but it's really under the umbrella of economics, not to the granular level that he's talking about. Yeah. Chris, anything else? Just want to mention, um, Ms. Paul is a first year teacher, has fit right in with our business department, has done some great work with the kids. And, um, you know, with Mary Brulat, every year I have a chance to get to talk to the seniors a little bit more after their experience. And, you know, we have a uh, conversation about what meant the most to them. And very Often, they will say that Mary's leadership class was one of the most formative experiences that they had in high school. So um, we're very pleased to have them um, as mentors for these young men. So thank you, everyone. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also might mention, before we move on, uh, for those of you who don't know, Heather, who was just getting up to, to introduce everybody, Heather is, for the next three to four weeks, uh, the principal at Fairfield School, because Sean is, is uh, away. And uh, I thank Heather for doing that, because it's just an additional responsibility. I thank Chris, because he's without an assistant principal for, <laughs> for a time being, but it, 
it, it was worked out ahead of time, and it seems to be working fine. It was a Thank great you. day. Good. The yeah. building's still standing. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll move on to um, E. Um, we put this in student report. Cameron, we didn't know if you had a report for us tonight. I do. You do? Yeah, and I'm joined awesome. by Haley over here. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's been four or five months so um, we can just try to fill you guys in on some of the highlights from the past few months up here at BFA um, the holiday pops assembly took place which is always very popular among students and this year we actually had a chance to see part of God's fill as well they performed two different pieces so that was really nice for the people who couldn't make it to the play um, still got to see it in school and I know a lot of people were really supportive of that as well as the band, chorus, and dance who all also performed. Um, NHS also took place or took part in some different service projects for the holidays. Um, that's an ongoing tradition that we've been doing for quite a while. So, Our honor society? yes. So, what we did was we kind of broke up into different groups. Um, a couple groups went caroling at the local senior homes um, and they loved it. And we're actually going back to do some senior games so this month so that'll be a lot of fun to kind of just play some board games and sit down and have a conversation with them and January the midterms the new schedule I personally think went really well I liked having that in between time to get to talk to my teachers if I needed help um, another thing that was really helpful was just to make up a test if I needed to or finish a test um, and also we got the brunch, which was I think worked out really well, um, and I've heard a lot of good, I heard a lot of good um, compliments and stuff on that. Um, we had the winter ball, which was very successful. I'm not sure on the exact count, but I know that we're in a very good place um, for prom financially, so it's always a good thing. Um, the Varsity Scholars Bowl team moved on to states, and their competition is actually this Saturday. So hopefully they do well. Um, uh, in February we had. What is that? <laughs> oh, in February we had the a um, gun threat here, and I think that the St. Albans Police Department and our school officials handle it really well. I know some people were um, had mixed emotions on it. But personally, I think they explained themselves well and they handled it safely and no one was hurt. Although some people were upset, it worked out in the end. Um, so yeah, and then we just had actually in March, because of that and because of the Parkland shooting, we also had a BFA walkout, which not every student participated in, but I did personally. <laughs> um, and it was really like powerful, I think, because um, for, we stood in silence for 17 minutes while a student, Alex Haig, read a student's name from the Parkland shooting every minute. And we also had speeches and poems read, and it was very powerful. Um, another thing that kind of came out of that was um, headed by Miss Kane and Miss Christie was the um, hashtag What's Your 17 BFA. Um, and I just want to say, I think personally that is amazing. Um, walking to school into the bathroom on Monday, um, that was really, really moving. It almost brought me to tears to see how much the teachers care. It's not um, just, they're not just teachers. They're someone you can rely on. Um, so I'm hoping that the hashtag what's your 17 kind of keeps growing. Um, but I think this was a really positive step um, and move. So thank you all the faculty who participated in that. Um, I think that's really important personally, especially in light of all the recent events around the country that it's just nice to have a little positivity in your day. Um, the blood drive is next week on March 28th. And that's going to be pretty <laughs> interesting. Um, and we also have a band concert the same day at 7 p.m. And you're all welcome to come if you would like. <laughs> and then on the horizon, looking toward May, which will be here before we know it, um, we have Bob White Comet. Um, we actually had our first meeting this morning. And it looks like we have about 41 participants. So we're up quite a bit from recent years. Um, last year, we only had 15. So I. Th 
step in the right direction. So that's May 4th at 7 p.m. Um, you can get tickets at the door, they're $5, and we'd love if you'd all come out and support student council as well as our seniors on one of their last big moments before they graduate. Um, we also, following that, the next day we have prom, which is hosted by the junior class this year. Um, it's at UVM, so we changed from the Sheridan, which is where it's been the last two years, but I think it's gonna be really nice. Um, I saw the room, it's overlooking the waterfront. It's gorgeous, it's huge, so they're in a really good place. And lastly, before graduation, of course we do, everyone in the AP classes do have to take the AP exam if they wish, so that is one last thing to do before we can graduate, but I'm <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> And yeah, do you guys have any questions? What is um, exactly is Bob White Comet Contest? So the Bob White Comet Contest, um, it's been an ongoing tradition for a while here now. So all seniors who would like to participate take pl take get together and just do, they break up into groups and do skits. Um, a lot of times it has to do with impersonating teachers or impersonating an event at VFA. Um, so those are always really funny and then following the skits they get into their old prom dresses suits tuxes whatever um and that's right it's the day before prom is so men can rent their tuxes um and don't have to rent it more than once so <laughs> they get all dressed up go on stage almost like a beauty pageant sort of thing and answer a question which can range from what's your favorite color to if you were president for a day what would you do um and we select judges throughout the community and they choose top, the top five girls, the top five boys, and then they get one last question, and then the top three from each gender, so we give out six scholarships, and yeah. So they kind of compete for scholarships. It's pretty much the main purpose of it. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's very Saturday Night Live. Yeah. <laughs> My oldest two kids didn't get into it, so I, I didn't. That's why I didn't know about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have to ask the teacher's permission before yeah. they impersonate them. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that? <laughs> How good is that? So just for the record, I'm a mother of a Mr. Bob White. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure we get down in the minutes. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I think we should have a motion where they don't have to ask the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> or administrators. <laughs> I think a lot of the jokes went over my head because I didn't know the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Something was funny. Um, this is, I think this is our last meeting at BFA this year. There's one on uh, June 20th, but yeah, it's after graduation. So that's your last report. It is. Ooh. Yeah, three years. Good job. Thanks thank for you. Everything done. Yeah, thank you for all your support and allowing me to come to all these meetings the last three years. Good luck um, moving forward, and we'll see you. Thank you. Much. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. So let's move on now to the consent agenda. The consent agenda only has one item in it, and that is uh, the minutes from seven March. There's no objection. These items will be adopted. Is there any reason to pull the minutes from the consent agenda for discussion? Nope. All right. So are there any objections? See no objections. Minutes are adopted. Move on to old business. Item 7A is the non-union wage schedule. Kathy. So I want you to share that. <coughs> We'll get to the mm -hmm. <laughs> Put on your bifocals, Mr. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <coughs> so what I have here, um, if you look down, uh, the first column has the name names of the positions. Um, we have many fewer people on the non-union scale now because paraeducators, uh, lab supervisors, custodians, um, interpreter, deaf, secretaries, 
moved over to the union schedule and we uh, combine uh, union contracts. So because we had individual districts, uh, for instance, city custodians were non-union, but the rest of the folks were in the union, so they moved over to the union. Um, and this, that, that was last year. That was last year. So that this year, what we're looking at um, when we're looking forward to next year uh, would be asking the board to tell us what percent you would want added, what total new money you would want added to the wage scale. If you look to the right of the purple and the green columns, um, what we did, we give you different scenarios. If you look at the columns, if we put 0.75% on the base and allow each person to move a step, the, um, the dollar amount shows you what the cost would be for that salary um, scale. The second column on the top shows you uh, what that increase would be over the present year. The third column, this would, would be the total, the percent of total new money. So the first one is 3.84%. One step equals about 1.8% to 2.5%. And um, one step plus the increase to the schedule would give an individual anywhere from a 3.57% increase up to a 4.29 in that particular scenario. So, so if I'm looking at this correctly, um, the spread between nothing on the base mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. three quarters of a percent is like 18,000? Total, 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 total money that for the whole district. Yes, for the whole district. Okay. So what we need from the the board, we ran a few scenarios here, which are 0.75 percent on the base, um, and a step, which is a total new money of 3.84 percent, then 3.58, 3.33, 3.05. percent, and and we can do any scenario that the board would like to see us uh, accomplish for next year. Um, if, for instance, if you were to say to us, we don't want to do 3.58, we want you to do 3.6, 3.62, we can adjust the numbers based on um, what you want to uh, uh, add to the scale. The union um, total new money for next year is 3.5, for support staff is 3.5. How many how many FTEs do you are represented here? Mm. Well then I'll move on to my next observation while you're counting. So, so for each quarter of a percent people. it looks like you're talking about six thousand dollars. Correct. So from a dollar point about of view. 50 it, people. It's about 50 staff. People. From a dollar point of view, it doesn't it's not a lot of money. No. It's all the percentage is almost misleading. Right. Because we only have 50 FTEs. Right. Okay. Thoughts? Like, it's one other issue that's important is that a percent on the base affects everyone, whereas a step wouldn't affect people if they're, if they're at the top. Correct. Right now, we have one person that's on the top of the schedule, and that particular person is retiring. Is this a dollar increment schedule? It's a move point dollar yes. increment schedule, yes. Yeah. So, increase on the basis. Yeah. The same for everybody. Yeah. Okay. No, got any thoughts? Um, I'm looking. Okay. Sue, any questions? Still looking. <laughs> okay. 
it's in micro font. So it's just, <laughs> just a little bit of it on the pen. And this is uh, uh, a paper that we've seen before. This is similar to the support staff. This is all the non union employees. Yeah, right. So support staff is 3.5. Yes. Right, but the actual schedule. What about it? Yeah, how does it differ from? It's a. It's just something we did separate. Schedule. It's a, okay. Separate schedule. It's a separate dollar schedule. Dollar, 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 dollar increment. increment schedule. Okay. Yes. Um, what's the uh, time frame on this? Are you guys looking for action on this tonight? It would be great if we could because we can't give out contracts until we have this direction from the board. For what fiscal year? For next, next year. Next year. Oh, okay. Which we would typically try and get the contracts out or letters of intent and not contracts. Letters of intent um, around the first of May ish, just so that individuals know whether or not they want what they're going to be getting if they return. Yeah, okay. These guys don't get contracts because they're not union. Right, correct. They That's get a letter of intent. intent. Correct. And you've already yeah. approved the guidelines for the non union folks. Right. right. This is the, the benefit package and everything. This is the wage scale. Mm -hmm. This is always, I always kind of find this whole concept outstanding, you know, just kind of weird because it's like the best contract for people that don't have a contract. <laughs> I understand why we do this because we have to have some sort of system, right? Yes, the system, right? Because otherwise it's just like, right, right. Skeleton. right. otherwise we could have you know, people salary, just. salary rates all over the place. Right. And this is probably getting a little more uniform to right with the yes. uh, run. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everyone in the district was put on the same scale for this the present year we're in. And this is moving forward. And do we have a recommendation from staff on this? Well <clears throat> our recommendation would would be to look at somewhere around the second from the top, 0.5 on the base, which goes for a 3.58% increase, which is a hair above what the, the support, the union support <coughs> staff is getting, a hair. Um, and a reason why they didn't have the advantage of any negotiations, um, so it'd be very slightly higher, but we're not talking really big dollar figures. The only thing I would say moving forward is it would be really nice to get this immediate, to get this information immediately in advance. And that's fine. You can make the decision at the next meeting, but it's not crucial that the decision is made tonight. We have time. I can even run it on legal size for next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you stick it in email, at least we can. We can. Right. Bigger. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay taking taking the administration's recommendation I and mean, it's not a lot of dollars. It's not a lot of dollars spread between them. Um, but if, if you guys would like to chew on it for another two weeks, that's fine too. Typically, um, uh, is this a typical raise? 3.5 for um, non-union support staff? It varies every year because they're non-union. There's yeah. no negotiation. It's up to the board to decide what. So kind what's of the um, what's the history in the last five years? Two percent, three percent. Well, two, three. Last year, I don't even remember because last year we were bringing people from four yeah. different entities yeah. onto this one schedule, so it varied, and I think we picked up and placed individuals. Mm -hmm. So. I think we, we did it with like a minimum of a 3% raise, I think. Mm -hmm. So some got a little bit more, but nobody got less than a 3%, mm -hmm. I think. It's, I'm trying to remember. I, I remember, I know, I think at City School, we used to try and mirror, uh, yeah. mirror what the uh, 
the union yeah. folks got yeah. a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but yeah. somewhere right around the same. Right. We did that to it, yeah. I mean, that, I think that's yeah. kind of what everybody Great sort of did. Yeah. Yeah. I know when we picked up and placed the, uh, the union staff on the scale for the present year, um, it was, uh, it, they were assured of at least a 3% um, raise, and it's one of the reasons we um, gave you the, the data on the 3.84 because the the, the 3.58, there are people um, that get less than the 3.5% that the union staff, because uh, when you put the money on the scale, some people, there's a range. It may be that percent for the total new money, but the range of increase for people varies from 3.3 to 4 for this, and it depends on where they're placed on the scale. Yeah, where they are. So what am I looking at on this chart? This is just the listing of the individuals without their names attached. Well, so, yeah, but you have yeah. you have dollar increases and percent increases. Are you assuming a raise on this, or so this this right here um, is reflecting the information that is the um, the bottom the bottom one, which is a zero on the base. Okay. Yes. So, for instance, someone would go from nineteen dollars and seventy-one cents an hour to twenty dollars and thirty-five cents an hour. First one, mm -hmm. so it gives you a sense of the actual what the actual dot. Um, it's actually sense increase would be for a person with that mm -hmm. total new money. I think it's one of the reasons we want it. We've been poring over this for the last couple of weeks and making sure we had the data right because it's hard to put this out in an email and have it be, it's not really self-explanatory. It, it really takes a presentation to understand. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nilda. Much pleasure. I'm fine with the, with the, the point five recommendation. I, my theory has been keep the same as are similar to support staff and professionals. Okay. I'm good with it. Too. <coughs> I'm good with it. Line five, the number three. Look for a motion then. So moved. Second. Thank you, Thank you Joe. Um, any more discussion or questions on this? This is uh, again to clarify my 0.5% on the base. The administration's recommendation. Yes. And a step. Right. And a step. And a step. And a step. Yes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Extensions? I say five zero because I didn't hear it now. Six zero. Nine zero. Five zero zero. Six zero. Is he there? Mm -hmm. Al, are you there? Five zero. Yeah. All right, that moves us to seven B, which is co-curricular. Okay, another set of charts coming around. We can do some two steps. <laughs> First, this is um, the BFA Northwest Tech Center extracurricular and co-curricular wage scale. Again, the guidelines for the extracurricular and co-curricular were moved out of teacher contracts. Um, uh, we spent a good deal of time last year making the scales sensible for the, the K-8 folks. Um, the, in, in terms of the high school schedules for both extracurricular and co-curricular, the, um, the usual customary thing that we have done is one year give a step, the next year put money on the base of the schedule. We did make this a dollar increment schedule. Um, there was a little bit of variation between steps. Um, we did use 2%, we put 2% on the base, which in the case of, of the extracurricular was $103 on the base. So it went from 5, 1, 51.53 to 52.56. 
and in the co-curricular schedule, it would go from 49.17 to 5,015. The um, consumer price index is somewhere in the one percent range. The NEEP, the New England Economic, yeah, the NEEP, yeah, <laughs> NEEP um, is is about 2.8, and that's why we used. Um, we, we think that this is in both cases in the high school. Uh, scales that these are very competitive with other districts um, and uh, we have worked on these in the, the past couple of years so for FY18 people were given a step for eligible employees so we would recommend putting 2% um, on each of these scales for uh, next year in the no case step. with no step the uh, dollar amount we're talking about um, we spend on extracurricular, thank you. On extracurricular, um, the present year we spend. This is, this is extra. We spend about two hundred twenty-two thousand dollars on extracurricular on stipends. We have it at the high school. At the high school, a ton of people are on step ten in these different categories. Mm -hmm. And the categories are on the back of the extracurricular scale. These are the, we have two groups, group one and group two. So putting this on this, on this scale for extracurricular would cost us about $10,000 in addition. So it, it would go from 222 to 231, 231,000. On the co-curricular scale, it would go from about 84,000, which is what we presently uh, pay for co-curricular to about 85 one. Go from what to 85 one? 84. 84. About 84,000 to 85,000. So it would be a, a $1,000 increase. So about 10,000 for both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I got a question. Yeah. Why a couple of them were crossed out like sad? Is that because we don't have an advisor now? Or? That's right, we don't have that. Those programs. Those programs. Okay. The ones that are crossed out. We don't have SAD, we don't have diversity. Um, the drama assistant and the, uh, Kevin helped me with this, the drama assistant and another drama position were deleted and we brought on a, a full time drama teacher. teacher. Gotcha. Okay. There still may be some cleaning up of this. Because these are listed, doesn't mean we always fund them. Right. And sometimes people share a position. So if they share a position, they each get half. Right. And we have a lot of that. So you're recommending 2% with don't step on both co curricular and extracurricular? Yes. And then it comes to 20, uh, about 20,000 or? 10,000 10, for both. For both. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about the K-8? Make a decision. Well, I, I didn't hand them out. Oh, I should have said that. Do you want me, do you want to look at the K-8 schedule before you do either? Well, do I was going to ask how this, how they all align, I guess. We also did 2% on the, the K-8 schedules. Last year, we spent about $5,000 making them uh, equal Consistent. among all the K-8 schools and the extracurricular and co-curricular. So we've, we put a fair amount of money on the scale last year. Um, um, but they haven't had, they go sometimes 10 years, five years without change in right. the rate. So we did the same thing. We put 2% on the uh, elementary extracurricular and co-curricular. And do you have those? I do. Oh. And BFA, do they go every year with their, with their raise? Co-curricular and extracurricular? Typically, has, that, yes. that's been the history. They either get an increase on the bay, on the schedule or they get a step. But the majority of the individuals on the BFA schedules are actually on the step 10, on the top steps. I think it's worth, though, Explaining to people how this is disengaged, you know, from the contract, if you could yes. do that. Yes, it took uh, it took quite a few years, but we 
this actually the BFA um, extracurricular and co-curricular um, schedules and um, the information on it was previously embedded in the teacher's master agreement and it was always and it had been tied to the teacher's salary schedule um, so a few years back we did a lot of work decoupling those out of the teacher's master agreement so that it's um, no longer tied to mm -hmm. the teacher's salary schedule but also uh, there was the um, the indication that it, it being in the teacher's master agreement individuals that weren't necessarily teachers but were filling those coaching positions may have had some rights to the benefits in the teacher's master agreement so that's why it's um, separated out into its own separate guidelines and it's a no longer a negotiated item with the union it's, it's the board decision as to what to do with the schedule and it's not grievable it's not grievable you don't think I was pleased with that. <laughs> and this is the same thing, 2% of no stuff. 2%. Uh, yes. You know, we're talking about... Um, and the K-8s don't have stuff. Oh, right. 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 The extracurricular increase for K-8 is about $5,000, and it's about $300 for the co <coughs> And we only have, I think, two. The reason there is an hourly rate on all of these schedules is that um, an hourly employee must be paid hourly if they are a coach or doing extracurricular work. You cannot give them a stipend. So we had to come up with an hourly rate. And um, we came within about $100 of the stipend rate uh, for well, that brings up a good point. If they work over eight hours or if they work over 40 hours, then are they required to pay them time and a half? Yes, we are. So how do we? It's a weighted overtime rate. It's a weighted rate between their daily I, rate and I understand that. Yeah. How do we authorize overtime for, I mean, how do we prevent someone from saying, I put in 60 hours last week, you know? They, how do we control it? Their, their um, time sheet is approved by an administrator. Uh, basically by allowing um, or hiring uh, an hourly employee to do this these kinds of work, you're basically authorizing them to put in some overtime hours. So when a But how many? How much? How do well even with the overtime it came within a hundred dollars of the of what the, stipend. the stipend amount that would have been paid to a salaried employee. It, it's not it's hard it's negligible the difference because only your um, actual work hours count when you're talking about 40 hours lunch doesn't count uh, sick days don't count holidays don't count <coughs> uh, and right now we only have two 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 coaches for, that are hourly who approves the timesheets? Yeah, you said their timesheets are approved. By, um, I think that um, Dan Marlow looks at them and it would go to Jeff. For the, for the, for the high school ones. For the high school and for the elementary, it would go to um, the approvers that the do approver. all the approvers. The, there's different ones in the different schools. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's ten, so it's did you say there are only two individuals that are on that, this hourly process? Right. So yes. All, you do you can pay a stipend to a teacher or a community member you must pay an hourly rate to an employee of yours who is an hourly employee okay so right. yeah, i understand and yes. so there's only two yes there's yes. only two individuals there right just to put things never into mind yes <laughs> never mind because <laughs> I, I thought he was going to come up with a yeah because the majority of them are are um professional staff members and or community and members that are not Employees. And sometimes, he, no matter who it is that's coaching or um, performing co-curricular activity, um, often give the, gives the money back to the school. An hourly employee must be paid, then they can write a check back to the school. But you, they cannot right. they donate, can't donate their time. Okay. They must pay them. Uh, I'm, with, I'm with you now. Yeah. Um, my last question is, uh, what's budgeted? There's enough money in the budget to, to cover the areas because it's the amount of increase isn't that significant. 
I would have put I would have put an amount, an increased amount. I can't tell you off the top of my head the exact amount. That covers this. Yes. Any other questions? So what's budgeted for two thousand fiscal two thousand nineteen? Two thousand nineteen. Um, that's already that that was built in. These raises were built in. Yes. Yeah. I was when we when we build the budget, anything that has to do with wages that may have uh, an increased impact, I always make sure that there is uh, an amount in that budget to cover any increase. So if I just to be clear, <coughs> if I may have budgeted based on a three percent increase, that means that if you uh, approve a two percent increase, the remaining funds just get shifted so they can be used in some other areas in the budget. And you have to budget something. So exactly. Because of the timing differences. Here. Exactly. And or vice versa. Right. If I didn't put in a, an increase, we would have to find the money mm -hmm. in the budget some in other areas to but, cover those costs. But so. if there's extra, that's what rolls over into capital. Yeah. Capital right. Because the voters are voting on the total budget, not the line item. Right. Yeah. So we, we would adjust within yeah. the existing budget. Within the existing budget. Okay. So I was going to change your mind if you take much longer. <laughs> 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 she's, 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 she's still here? It's only seven. <laughs> I'm going to ride. She's still here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long walk. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'd look for a motion. For uh, do both of these or just separately? I think we should do them separately. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, for our DFA. DFA is yeah, the two percent, two percent, no step, no step, with no step for FY19. The co and extracurricular. Co and extracurricular. I second that. Mike and Jeff. Any more uh, discussions or questions on the BFA? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? <laughs> Six zero. I will attach a copy of the guidelines with the salary schedule, with the wage schedule, I shouldn't call it salary, for the non union folks and for the, for the board, half for the next board meeting. Because now it's all complete, the guidelines and okay. the wage schedule. Awesome. Um, then I would look for a motion for the K-8s, <coughs> just a straight 2% increase, right? I'll make that motion for the extracurricular and co-curricular, 2% uh, for the elementary K-8. Second. Okay. Jack, thank you, Mike. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Also six zero. Next lot. That brings us to new business. Um, as I mentioned at our last board meeting, um, Martha Castanet Reese has resigned her seat from the town. So we asked uh, the central office to advertise for a new position uh, to send a letter of interest, and we did get a response. I think we we're all very happy um, to see who it came from. It's uh, an old BFA board member. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like step right in it. As soon as it came out of my mouth. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's an old board, and she was a member. <laughs> I don't think that fixes it. You're not. <laughs> We were happy with Sally. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, we have her letter of interest is an attachment and her resume, and um, I think it would be appropriate um, if Sally wanted to address us or tell us while you're back. And do I have to stand up? You can do whatever you want. Because I think that, even though I'm old. <laughs> 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 First of all, I, I'm certainly honored um, and excited to, to be selected to join the board. Um, and, and in addition to be with this wonderful group of people, 
was so excited to see everyone again tonight. That was that was so wonderful. And I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to the um, something I really enjoy, which is the group decision process. I actually like that. That was my most fun part of being an SRS social worker. Too. And um, I'm also looking forward to seeing um, all of our children's needs and met as well as we can and to have our offerings for them enhanced. <clears throat> when I grew up, I, I went to a public high school in Massachusetts, had a class, a graduating class of 30. And when I was a senior, two out of the five teachers I had were relatives. So, <laughs> Sounds like Fairfield. Um, yeah, <laughs> but when I went on to the private college slash university system, I discovered that I had not been exposed to much of what these private school students and students from large systems had been exposed to. And I won't tell you how long ago that was, but, but it was true even then. And then I've had kids, grandchildren, uh, I have five, and they functioned in Midwestern school systems and in the Mid-South and in the Deep South. And I have been so surprised at what was offered to them because they're all large systems. And I, I truly believe, you know, from the time I was, thank you, Nilda, for, for offering to let me serve on the Act 46 committee, because I, am, I envisioned this board, and I was all in favor of it right from the start, and, and I do believe that we can do so much more for our kids as a unified system. I've seen it work in other parts of the country, and I, I do believe it's working well here. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Thanks. being here. <laughs> I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Sally Lindbergh uh, to the open board position. Oh. <laughs> 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 <Again. laughs> Welcome back, Al. Welcome back. <laughs> so you guys got the gist of what I was saying, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm second it too if I could. <laughs> so you're going to second it, Mike. So Al wants to. I'll beat you to it. I'll beat me to it. Even though I was mid-sentence. <laughs> I was going to say, on the library board, I'm a secretary, and we put down two people as seconding something sometimes. So I don't know if that's kosher. Nah, that's good. We're good. Just be prepared that we'll hear about cursive handwriting every now and then. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I certainly, I left... Mr. Mosca with the cursive writing mug, and I also left Sean with uh, Sean Miguel with the cursive writing mug. And I still believe in cursive writing, so you might hear about it. <laughs> I wish I could write as elegantly as you would expect. That's all. Well, you, well, you, you should see my handwriting. My handwriting is terrible. So. <laughs> but I can, I can write nice cursive if I have to, and I can read cursive. And kids need to be able to do that. It's important. Okay. Any other questions for Sally? <laughs> Any discussion on the appointment? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor of appointing Sally, indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. There's a chair right here. Thank you. Belly up, Sally. <laughs> she has to go get sworn uh, in. Yeah. You have to get sworn in. You can't vote, but you can uh, say I'll get sworn in tomorrow. Very good. How's that? I don't see things. Such a creature of habit. I was <laughs> okay. Brenda, do we have an old name for you? We We do have it. Former name. Ah, see, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, that brings us up to 9A, which is warrants. We have three, four warrants to approve. Yeah, you want them all? Three. Motion to approve all four of the warrants. Thank you, Mike. I'll second that. Thank you, Nova. Any discussion on the warrants? I'm not going to ask how much we pay for health care this month. <laughs> but I, well, next I, month. I guess I, I did have a question about um, tuition to Enosburg. Yeah. So that's for half a semester, right? Yes. So we're paying about two twenty-five a year for this this budget. Mm -hmm. And how does that break down year by year? I mean, by next year, how do you once you think that'll go down? 
Well, that was in the budget that was presented for voters. I think it goes down to what, 160,000 okay. maybe next year? I'm, I'm working off the top of my head. No, I mean, I, thank you. Yeah. All right. Are we, it all depends how many seniors graduated are going to graduate. Well, this I don't year. know the makeup of the class. I don't yeah. off the top of my head right now either. So this year was all four years or three years? Three. 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 So next year will be, be just two seniors. Right, just juniors and seniors, and the following year will be just seniors. Yeah. 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 We need to talk to that uh, Okay, so we have a uh, we have a motion and a second on the warrants. Is there any discussion on any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? 6-0. Uh, turn it back over to Chris for the uh, hometown administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Farr. Um, I only want to touch on one of the items in my report uh, that you saw. It was um, the picture on the last page, I believe, that was of the uh, student activity that was held last week. Um, I don't want to gild the lily. Cameron and, and Haley spoke very eloquently about what happened. Um, what I do want to uh, mention is that um, Joanne passed along a nice piece of research today that talks about school safety, and I have it here. And um, there's sort of two ways you can go, and Preston speaks very clearly on this point. One, and I think they're both really two sides of the same coin, one is about hardening a school and um, making sure that you have your school resource officer and making sure your building is safe and you have emergency protocols and some really good practice. The other is making sure that everybody is committed to building a uh, positive relationship so that nobody quote unquote slips through the cracks. Um, this uh, piece does a really good job in juxtaposing those two approaches to school safety. Um, Quite obviously, I think you need both, but there's parts of this that I would not advocate for. But it does say, speaking to the hard side, that peaceful schools don't come from installing bulletproof windows, arming teachers, or kicking out troublemakers. And then it says, research on childhood trauma shows that everyday relationships with teachers, caregivers, and friends often have the most restorative effect. So um, when you listen to what the um, what the girls talked about tonight relative to what's your 17 and providing really positive messaging throughout school, the leadership of our faculty in that effort, and the need to always ensure that we're building relationships. I always say our staff is the first line of defense relative to school safety. If you notice that a kid is out of sorts, can you bring that person to guidance? Can you give that student the kind of attention uh, they need? Uh, we talked a little about this at our faculty meeting yesterday. Um, and it's really just about being aware, supporting kids, finding out what their needs are, getting them, getting them to the right place. So um, the, the activity that the students held the other day was really, I think, about uh, the overall uh, aspect of school safety where it's truly relationship-based. Um, our students represented us extremely well. Um, the speakers were... Um, very articulate around the need for school safety and uh, took a very emotional and difficult time and I think set the direction in a very positive tone that I think will be very relationship based going forward. Um, they worked very hard with uh, Chief Taylor. We sat with them for a couple of meetings and they had a very clear purpose and they were respectful, they were safe and um, I think provide a very meaningful event for our kids and for our school community. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that that was recognized uh, in my report and know that some of the approaches are truly supported by research. And um, once again, thank our students and uh, for their leadership in um, reflecting very positively on our school and community for a very important, probably the most important uh, matter of their entire high school career. Chris, what kind of participation did you have in that? I'm going to say, just looking around, it was probably about 100 students, maybe a few more. Um, they lined the entire walkway in front of the school and the walkway heading to the big main doors right in the front and center of the um, old entrance. So I'm going to say it was about 100 students and four students spoke and um, were very passionate about, about it. And everybody handled it extremely well. 
Everybody came in. They did exactly what they said they were going to do, and, and then they went back to class. It was just an extraordinary moment um, of solemnity and hope. Um, were there any issues or there was uh, respect between the students who did it and the ones who didn't do it? I mean, I heard no um, difficulty between the groups. I don't know if you no. guys. I think everybody was very respectful. The, the, most of the teachers had to be in because, you know, if there were students in class, so we needed to be mindful of their instruction, of course. And um, we had uh, administrators, and I think there was a few other folks out and around to make sure the activity went well. Uh, Chief Taylor and his team were around and about just to ensure that there was student safety because, of course, now we have to be very conscious of gathering in groups and what could happen. But um, they were tremendously supportive as well. So um, I, I, I just don't know that you could have asked for a better way for students to express um, what, what they were feeling and not only just sounds in the air, but uh, positive steps going forward uh, in creating the kind of climate and culture that will be safe for everyone. Thank you. I think that picture speaks volumes that you have in your Yes. in your packet. Very powerful, very important event. Any other questions for Chris? Okay. Brings us to the rest of the principals. Let's Excuse me, Jim. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not going to have to leave the meeting. Okay. Uh, thanks for hanging with us so far, Al. Good Thank you. Good to have you back. Yeah. All right, take care. Chris, could I, could I make a comment? Oh, I, I really can't make a comment now. Sure you can. You oh, just can't vote. I can't, yeah. You okay. can make a comment. I, I just wanted to say that I um, went to the Essex Junction Robotics Tournament, and I had an opportunity to meet the St. Albans Ringers and talk with mm -hmm. Pete Simula about um, how well things were going, and he mentioned that there might even be a tournament at the FA next year. So I was very pleased. I have a grandson who's been able to participate in that since grade three, and he's a junior now, um, but in another state. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's something that's going to come up, I'm going to be available for in sort of the feeder system, the way athletics have feeder systems. It's amazing work, and Pete and Brett do a terrific job. So. Yes, definitely. It was very nice to see him. And the kids, and actually the kids, the boys were very well behaved, but very comical too <laughs> in their breaks. Thank you. I think they were having fun. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, stay with BFA. Let's go, uh, Mr. Lyons. Anything for us tonight? Sure. The uh, just announcements on stuff. The ladies um, certainly um, did a nice job with that. The um, this Thursday at the, uh, <coughs> seven o'clock is the one act performance. Uh, next week we have our spring instrumental concert on the 28th, 7 o'clock on the PAC. Thursday night we have our parent-teacher conferences from 4 to 9, um, Thursday the 29th. And um, moving into April, things are um, a little quieter as far as events go, but that's what we have in March anyway. Shannon? Um, I had... Brenda, attach a, a brief report to your um, board attachments that has just some information about what some of the different leadership teams have been working on at BFA and some department highlights. Um, there is a link to the robotics. Um, so Sally, when you get that, um, Pete did put a little um, summary in there about robotics and there's a link to what the, what the challenge was this year for those of you that want to check that out. Um, so when you have a moment to read through that. Um, we're looking forward to March 30th, the district-wide in-service, which will be focusing on um, student leadership. Um, Jeff and I and a number of teachers and paraeducators from BFA and all of the sending schools met at St. Albans City School last week for training um, with a group of folks from the Center for Creative Leadership. They're from North Carolina um, to be trained, to train our faculty and staff on um, ways to promote student leadership in our schools. Um, so the whole district will be doing that on the 30th. We're excited about that. And, um, and then a couple weeks after that, Angelo, Joan, and I will be traveling to North Carolina as part of a Waddington initiative um, 
the same one that Michelle and Leanne did um, to promote principal leaderships as well. So excited about that. I, I had a question. Did did the messenger print the honor roll yet for BFA for the first semester? Or do they do that? <coughs> It, it, it hasn't, it hasn't gone out so. to the, the messenger yet. No. Okay. So is there any idea of them? There, part of the, the shift to proficiencies, um, yeah. it, it's been a little bit more complicated calculating who's on the honor roll. And so okay. there's been some, some glitches that IT and I have been working hard on. Um, and it's, it should be very, very soon. I, I, can't, I can't give you a deadline because there's... Somebody there's asked me. Numbers. That's all. Yep. No, all right. absolutely. Yep. Question. Roll All right. Um, yesterday, Amy Turner and Stephanie Hodgkins with the counselors took 20 students um, to visit Clinton Community College, which is a, a nice uh, residential two-year school over in Plattsburgh and Plattsburgh State University. So it was a great way to give students who maybe have less exposure to or, or have left fewer opportunities to spend time on college campuses to see two very different colleges. Um, got a tour. Clinton Community College has a wind energy program, so they got to tour the lab um, and see all the wind turbine parts. Um, and we are working with Karen Chester, you heard about Karen earlier this evening, who does the job shadows um, to be able to take students up to the Career Expo um, later on. We're trying to just make sure students have a lot of exposure to opportunities for after high school. And Heather. Uh, yes, I would just like to touch on something that Haley brought up, and that is that on the 28th, uh, we will be hosting with Club Interact the blood drive here. <coughs> Um, because of the raw flu season and because of the bad winter, the Red Cross is down about 28,000 units of blood. So um, I do have a link if somebody wants to request it. You can sign up for an appointment online. It's it's here all day. Until so, when? Um, until when? Yeah. Until what time? What time? Probably about 3. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Usually about 9 to 3. And like I said, we got said 9 to 3. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and then you can sign up online. I said my computer's dead now, but if you shoot me an email, I can send you the link and you can sign up right online. That's a relatively new club, right? Yeah, last how, year. How are they doing? Fantastic. Fantastic. Yep. That was your idea, wasn't it? To work well, with the, I played a part in it, but we had um, two members of Rotary come to us, Stephanie Hodgman and I, mm -hmm. and broach the subject of starting this club. So it will be a year in January that it Thank was you. founded. Thank you for doing that. Oh, yeah. The kids kind of run it yeah. on their own, really. <laughs> you know, they do. It's great. It is. It is. Anything it's that they can do like that is great. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and have leadership ability and make those connections in the community. And I'll okay. say those two members of Rotary every Tuesday talk to us about <laughs> things at Rotary. They're very positive about it. They are very high energy. Yep. Very motivated. Thank you. Uh, Leanne. I have a couple of activities I wanted to share with you, uh, one that's just passed and one that's coming up. Uh, this past Monday and Tuesday we had what's called uh, Mock Interview Day. So every year uh, we have uh, people from business and industry come in and perform mock interviews with our seniors and second year students. And it's an opportunity for them, for our students to complete a resume and um, go through an exchange of an interview. Um, so we get feedback from students every year that come back years later and say, you know that mock interview day was really helpful for when I applied for this job. Um, so we're really thankful for business and industry that come in and help us with that. And then uh, coming up, we've got every single one of our programs that are preparing for Skills USA. Skills USA is a career and technical student organization that um, all 17 career tech centers participate in. Um, at the Sheridan on the 4th and the 5th, I think there's close to 1,000 students that will be competing. And they compete within their uh, industry area. And an example of that is this Sunday, we have our chef instructor taking four students down to the New England Culinary Institute to compete in baking and pastry, culinary arts, and food and beverage service. Um, so we wish them well. They're actually doing some fundraising this Friday. They're holding a dance and a lip sync contest to raise some money. Um, in hopes that students will be going to nationals, which will be in Louisville, Kentucky, in June. Great. Good. Okay. Lisa, anything to add? In, the, in June, we're going to present um, to all of you, so you'll be at the Northwest Technical Center. 
and the topic will be the career development area or the adult career and technical education. So we'll be able to talk more in depth about that. Just recently we had to produce a report to the Department of Labor and this particular location, there's 16 in the state, we served just about 300 students, 300 adults, and statewide we served almost 3,000 adults. So we really have a significant position in the state and the governor's office has recognized that. And there's a lot of uh, pretty positive movement in the state in terms of looking at us as a preferred training provider. Kimmel. We've just come off two great community events, uh, the Railroad Show and the Home and Recreation Expo. We had a, almost one full week break between winter sports and spring sports. Um, almost. But almost. Expect, yeah, almost. Uh, but I expect there will be a very long break between the time spring sports get, uh, start mm -hmm. and the time they actually get on their fields, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. is very unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Um, the next big event for us is uh, a week from tomorrow, the state's largest <coughs> career and job fair. That's both a school and community event where um, not only do our students attend, but students from area schools uh, come here as well. And uh, the students are at Collins Pro until noon, and then the event is open to the public. A um, large number of business industry and educational um, facilities exhibit at that show and it's always very well attended and I think very worthwhile for, for the students and for the community. Thank you. Let's see who's going on here. Joan. Sure. Um, so um, so anyhow, at St. Albans City School we um, last night we held our Parent night, our parent conscious discipline training night that was open to the community. And we had over 20 people and um, we offered childcare, we had a dinner together and then we went through the brain states. That was the first one that people had asked us to do. So it was a really nice night. Stacy spearheaded the whole thing um, and it came off really, really well. And the other highlight um, from my perspective is just the student leadership we've been seeing just in the past couple of weeks in some different venues. One was the walkout and the, the way that they organized it <coughs> and how respectful they were, but also how they came together and had a voice. Another one was that the eighth grade students who usually create the eighth grade trip, I didn't think anything was going on, so I went to the teachers to get a group together and not even a, two days later I got an email saying, Ms. Cavalli, you may not know this, but we already have a group and we've been working on this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, okay, great. Have you told your teachers? Because I went to them. <laughs> and um, so we got together and they had a group and, and it's just been wonderful. And now they're taking on the different tasks and, and they're so excited about doing stuff like this. Um, and the third one is something that you can see on our daily announcements. Our commercial is running again uh, on Friday or actually tomorrow because on Friday, the talking trash can from the stewardship committee will be in the cafeteria to scold anyone who does not use the proper receptacle <laughs> or, um, or compost. So we're hoping to debut our talking trash can. And this is something, again, all designed by the students and Spearhead. And so just something we're really proud of. Thank you. Stacy. So I'm coming to you straight from the 70s. I don't normally dress like this because um, it is uh, Music in Schools Month the month of March and this entire week. Uh, Kathy Cameron Vicente, one of our music teachers, came up with this idea before February break that we should celebrate the decades. So um, we started on Monday with the 50s and we'll end on Friday with 90s and above. Uh, today was 70s, tomorrow's 80s. We've been doing things in the cafeteria with kids like um, today was YMCA and some disco. <laughs> we have um, we had American Bandstand during the 50s in black and white, and one kid came in and said, is this about the war? <laughs> because it was in black and white, so they've been getting a real education on um, music and the different genres and the different dress and fashion that um, was popular in each decade. And if you would, if you have a minute, go to our daily announcements this week, and you can see how 
much our students and staff that are participating in this, and it's actually quite comical. <laughs> Could I ask a question? I like yes. Did, they, did, did you talk about the sack dress in the 50s? We did not. No. I don't think we knew about we the sack something. dress. <laughs> <laughs> we should invite in guest speakers next year. So one of the things is people have said, well, I didn't, I didn't know this was going to be so big. I didn't have time to prepare. Can we do it again next year? Like, you know, after Halloween, so that I can go and buy all the costumes at half price after it's after you say after Halloween sale. And I said, yes, of course, we can make this a tradition. So I had uh, just two announcements. One, um, just letting uh, families know, and we've been advertising this, our kindergarten orientation um, for the fall. That'll be uh, students that are filed by September 1st. It's going to be on Tuesday, April 3rd. And there's two sessions. One starts at 4 and one at 5. So um, families and um, the new students get to come in and uh, get some information and visit all the classrooms. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and I also, uh, one thing I, it's really important I want to highlight, um, we had our first um, Maple Run Odyssey of the Mind representation this past Saturday. Um, and so there were actually um, five, uh, actually four teams, there was 24 students who participated, and that was across um, all the schools. Um, and, you know, at this point, you know, there, there are predominantly SATEC students, but there are students from Fairfield and, and SACS. And I think part of that is, you know, the coordinator is a SAC, is a SATEC parent, and, you know, we've been very involved, but I think that's a really good start. And it, I think it's just a really good example of um, a, a wonderful opportunity for our students. And um, our, our uh, coordinator is Lynn Tatro, and she's been doing this for a number of years. So she's very, um, you know, skilled at getting the information out. And it's all parent uh, volunteers who coach the team. So, um, so I'm really proud of that, and I think it's a really great way to have the schools, the, the students working together in a different way. Um, and one of the teams, one of the Division I teams, and that's third, fourth, and fifth grade, um, they are technically eligible to go to Worlds, so we're waiting, the team's meeting and trying to decide. Um, they happen to be the only team in their division that competed, but some of that is it's the balsa problem, so they have to build structures that hold weight. It's pretty complicated, so there's a, probably a reason why there wasn't a lot of teams maybe at that grade level that wanted to do it, so um, the team got great feedback, um, some good suggestions, but um, they're trying to figure out with the group if they're going to go, and we'll, we'll let the board know um, it, what their decision is. But we're very proud of them and all the teams and, and the coaches um, for, for doing that. So Great. that's my highlight. Where is it being held this year? Iowa. <laughs> Ames, Iowa. Ames, Iowa. Mm -hmm. Never been there. It's, yeah. <laughs> so just to clarify, SATEC <laughs> always did. Uh, SATEC was the only school that did it in the past, right? Well, I think it was years and years ago SAC had some teams, but in recent years um, we were the only school, and I think what had happened was there might have been a couple of kids from the other schools that wanted to do it, but because we weren't unified, you had to come as your school. Okay. So it's that we're one district, we were allowed to enter um, students from you know, actually different schools. So this is actually, it's excellent because, you know, there are, you know, fewer students from the other schools, but if we weren't merged, those students wouldn't, would not have been able to participate uh, because there weren't enough in each of the divisions for them. Because you really need about five students to make a team. So it's just another really great example, um, you know, working together and, and having kids come together. Um, so I just, I think that's really important. That's so, Thank you. Thank you. Jason, anything to add? No, I want to end on that. That's just a great example. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great example of what we're trying to do, and I think it's just a, a great way to end the kind of the K voices. Smart man. <laughs> Heather, did you have anything for Fairfield that you wanted to throw out there? <laughs> No, okay. a great day. <laughs> you had a day. I had a day. One day. I'll get back to you in two weeks. All right, great. Uh, Joanne? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm sure. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think we're done then. Okay, so I am agenda items for next meeting. Is that order training on? <coughs> That's for June. Uh, next meeting we're going to talk about efficiencies. Was that right? We'll start the conversation. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Um, I would just share that um, over the last two weeks I, I had a number of people um, first congratulate me on the budget and then uh, in the next breath mention not again mm. if things don't change. Um, they, they threw some trust at us this time because they expect things to get better. So we need to take a real good look at getting that cost of pupil down. So, heads up. And then we have student safety in the future. Do we know when that's going to? That will probably be the, um, the May 1st meeting. In, in addition to the first April meeting, we're going to, <clears throat> one of our five year plan things is a definition of equity. Yes. And we'll be to, to doing a presentation on that. Okay. Uh, anything else for future items? Yeah, policy municipal. Discussed tonight. Okay. Um, so, anything else? All right, nothing for executive session. So, folks, we've been to the agenda. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.